All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Torah Studies. Parshas Akev. And tonight is the 20th day of the month of Av. And that is the yurt site of the Rebbe's father. The Rebbe's father, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak, who was the chief rabbi in Dnieper Petrovsk. Back then it was called Yakatrinoslav. And the Rebbe's father was giving his life to keep Yiddishkeit. And he was very strong and very uh, stubborn to keep Yiddishkeit not giving in to the to the threats of the of the Russian government, the communists, and he ended up in jail, and uh, and that's he passed away in exile. So tonight this is your site. We have a big big schus to study Tehran on, on the day of his your site Leila Nishmasi, and. We have his the teachings also of Rabbi Levi Yitzchak. This is interesting. He was a big Kabbalist. And the way we got his teachings, when we learned the Tanya every day, sometimes we quote of his teachings. And this was done because the Rebbe's mother, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak's wife, she voluntarily went with him in exile. And over there, they didn't have paper, they didn't have ink. And she went and she took some grasses, she created ink, and she she gave him, and he wrote on the few books that he had on the side, on the sides of the books, he wrote his teachings, the Kabbalistic teachings. Later on, it came out somehow from Russia. We had it, and they printed a whole set of books. Anyway, this is to be Lil uh, Nishmas, the Rebbe's father. And today, we're talking about the topic of the mezuzah. That is mentioned in this Victoria portion of Akev, God's security system, understanding the magic of the mezuzah. So we all know what a mezuzah is, but although we know, we know we all know, I want to start with sharing a four-minute video about the mezuzah. What is the mezuzah? Just a minute, just making sure. Yes. Have you ever noticed an unidentified object at the entrance to a home, an apartment, store, or an office? On the right-hand doorpost, just around eye level, you've discovered a mezuzah. Sounds sensational? Well, it is. Spiritually speaking, it's the designated sign that God's presence is welcome and his providence is active in a space owned or occupied by a Jewish home or business. What exactly is a mezuzah? First, what you see is not what you get. You've spotted a case, but there's a small scroll of parchment inside. Now that's the real mezuzah. The term mezuzah is simply Hebrew for doorpost the prominent position at which an inscription of God's eternal call and command to his people is lovingly affixed. A mezuzah begins as a plain piece of parchment prepared from the hide of a kosher animal. Goats, sheep, and deer were once common, but nowadays it's usually a calf. The parchment serves as a handy canvas for a sacred text. There are selections from chapters 6 and 11 of Deuteronomy that communicate some of Judaism's ultimate beliefs and key practices. These passages are painstakingly inscribed by a highly skilled religious scribe known as a sofer in Hebrew. Using the same unique letters that fill a Torah scroll, precision is not only key to crafting a mezuzah, but its placement that facilitates its flow of divinity requires similar precision. Your front door is a great start, but if you've got interior doorways, they too will need a mezuzah. 
An entrance needs two door posts and a lintel. A doorless doorway should also get a mezuzah. Aside from lintel and doorpost, the entrance must be approximately 32 inches or higher. Only the entrance to a living space, approximately 36 square feet or more, needs a mezuzah. If a room has multiple entrances, each entrance also needs a mezuzah. Skip the restroom or washroom. A mezuzah is affixed to the doorpost that is to your right as you enter the living space. The mezuzah belongs at the lower part of the top third of a doorpost. Vertical or horizontal? Ancient traditions differ on this to satisfy everyone. It is often customary to settle for a diagonal position with the mezuzah's head slanting towards the living space beyond its doorway. Ensure that the Hebrew characters are right side up. Whether installing one or multiple mezuzahs, the following blessing is recited prior to installation. Baruch Ata Hashem Elekeinu Melech Elam Asher Kedishan of Mitzvesa V'tzivanu Likpeya Mezuzah. Did you know that mezuzahs require maintenance? The inscription may crack or fade with time and temperature. Jewish law recommends inspection by a sofer twice in seven years, although many prefer annual checkups during the month leading up to Rosh Hashanah, which is the time of year dedicated to spiritual repair. In our technological world, the mezuzah has been dubbed the Jewish security system. That's because it extends a net of divine protection over the property and its occupants. It's been pointed out that the divine name, traditionally inked in Hebrew onto the scroll's exterior, is also an acronym for Shomer Deltot Yisrael, Guardian of Jewish Doors. So the next time you notice the now identifiable object on a doorway, take a moment to touch it lovingly and embrace God's presence. Okay, so we got short course of what is a mezuzah, what we do. And a mezuzah is, of course, one of the mitzvahs in the many mitzvahs that God commanded us. And we do them simply because God commanded, commanded to do it, to place the mezuzah. But why do we have it? And today we're going to discuss a little bit deeper in a qualities of what mezuzah that is different than any other mitzvah. So we'll start with a mitzvah, the way we read it in this extor portion. It says, Uchsavtom al mezuzais beisecha uvisharecha, and you shall inscribe them upon the doorpost of your home and your gates. And there's a fascinating story in the Talmud that we're going to read about Unculus Bar Kloinimus, the convert, who is Unculus, you may be familiar with Unculus, the, the convert who is, has the famous commentary. The translation of the Torah in Aramaic is, comes from Unculus and is considered a very holy translation. In any case, the Talmud tells us the fascinating story what happened with him. After Unculus ben Kalinim was converted to Judaism, the Roman emperor sent a troop of soldiers after him to seize Unculus and bring him back. He was actually the uncle, if I remember correctly, of Unculus. Now, Unculus drew them toward him with verses that he cited and learned with them, and they converted. So that group of soldiers converted. He taught them some Torah, and they converted. The emperor sent another troop of soldiers after him and instructed them not to talk to him. Don't go into any conversations so that he wouldn't convince them with his arguments. The troops, the troops followed his instruction and took Unculus with them. As they were walking, Unculus said to the troop, to the troop of soldiers, I will say a mere statement to you. And he says as follows, 
a minor official holds a torch before a high official. A high official holds a torch for a duke, a duke for the governor, and the governor for the ruler. Does the ruler hold a torch before the common, the common people? The soldiers said, no. Uncle said to them, yet, the Holy One, blessed be he, holds a torch before the Jewish people, as it is written. And God went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. That's the story, of course, what we read from the Exodus of Egypt, that how God protected us, and he was like he went with a pillar. Of, of, of fire, all of those soldiers also converted. That's the second group. But they didn't give up. The emperor then sent another troop of soldiers after him to bring uncles and told them not to converse with him at all. The troops followed this, this instruction and took uncles with them. While they grabbed him and were walking, Unculus saw a mezuzah that was placed on the doorway. So he placed his hand upon it and said to the soldiers, what is this? They said to him, you tell us. So Unculus said to them, the standard practice throughout the world is that a human king sits inside his palace and his servants stand guard, protecting him from the outside. But with regard to the Holy One, blessed be he, his servants, the Jewish people, sit inside their homes, and he guards over them outside. As it is stated, God shall guard your going out and your coming in from now and forever. This is in the Psalms. Upon hearing this, those soldiers also converted to Judaism. And after that, <laughs> the emperor gave up. The emperor sent no more. He sent no more soldiers after him. So fascinating story, interesting story. We see how Uncle told him what, what a mezuzah is, what is interesting is that this concept that the mezuzah is actually guarding us is actually something that is mentioned in the halacha as well. And we see here from the tour, the tour, Rabbi Yaakov ben Asher, the, one of the first authorities in halacha, and he says as follows, it says, it is a positive commandment to write down the portion of the Shema and Vahaya Im Shamoa, these two portions, and to affix them on the doorpost. As it is stated, and you shall inscribe them upon the doorpost of your home and upon your gates. And it says, great care should be taken with keeping this mitzvah. As our sages of blessed memory said, he who has to fill in on his hand, fill in on his head and arm, tzitzis on his garment, and a mezuzah on his doorway, presumably will not sin. He says here presumably, but if you read in the Hebrew, I think it's more than presumably. It says, muchzak hu shelo yecheta. Muchzak means like it's almost, almost certain. Not certain, but almost certain that a person like this, who has the mezuzah, and he has the tzitzis, and he has the tefillin, that he will not sin. The mezuzah contains the oneness of God. So when they enter and leave their homes, they will recall the oneness of God and place a fear of God upon, upon themselves so that they would never sin. It's interesting, I, I, it was once the Rebbe, I just remind, reminded myself a story, the Rebbe once uh, 
saw a, a Jew, an in, in individual, very uh, high class Jew, not religious at all. And the Rebbe asked him a personal favor just to put on tzitzis. He just mentioned him, tzitzis, mezuzah, and tefillin. Just to put on the tzitzis, under, nobody should see it. And he agreed. He put in the tzitzis. After a while, he started in, in, uh, uh, finding out about Judaism. What is this about? What is this mitzvah? What is that mitzvah? That person ended up becoming completely observant. Only because of the tzitzis. So here it says also the mezuzah, the tzitzis, that feeling ensures that a person, a person does not sin. So we continue this. Says the rabbi, and this is continue from the Torah. All who are careful with this mitzvah merit that their days, along with their children's days, will be prolonged. That's what the Torah says, as the verse states, so that your days and the days of your children may be prolonged. Furthermore, he says, the mezuzah protects the home. As our sages expounded on the verse, God is your guardian. A mortal king stays inside and his servants stand guard outside. But you, Israel, sleep inside on your beds. And the Holy One, blessed be he, stands guard outside. For this reason, the mezuzah is affixed on the outer part of the doorpost, so that the whole house is placed under its protection. So what we find from here that the mezuzah is keeping, it's not just that it's a reward of the mitzvah. The mezuzah keeps the, keeps the person, it guards the person, and as we'll soon see, that this is not just a, as, a, as a reward for the mitzvah, this is part of the mitzvah itself. Now we find something interesting. The mezuzah has a quality of protection, not only when you keep it on the door. The mezuzah itself has a quality of protection. And we'll find it from a number of, of uh, angles. One of them is, we know in the, in the laws of purity and impurity, there is a law that says that a vessel, any, any item can become impure if it is a vessel. There's many different uh, conditions. Not all vessels can become, but anyway, a piece of wood, that it's, if, it's not, if it's not shaped as a vessel, it does not become impure. But if it has a shape of a vessel, then it becomes, it can become, it becomes susceptible to become impure. If let's say it touches a dead body or other, th other types of impurities, it becomes impure. What do you have to do with this? You have to dip it in, in the mikveh. That's a whole different, we're not going into this. But the point over here is, the Mishnah brings an example of what is something that becomes a vessel to become impure. So it says if you have a stick that has a dent in it to be able to receive a mezuzah. Let's see it inside. It says, If someone makes a receptacle, a, a, a receptacle of whatever size, it is susceptible to impurity. One such item is a stick with a, recept with a receptacle for a mezuzah. It is impure. So the question you may ask, why would someone make a stick with a receptacle to put a mezuzah in the stick? For what reason? A mezuzah you put on the, on the doorpost, you don't put in a stick. So the taste of Siyamta gives an interesting explanation. And he says, such was a common custom. 
it's possible that people in the Mishnaic era would carry mezuzahs with them, assuming it was a mitzvah and it would provide protection. So we find even the mezuzah, not as that, that was not a commandment. The commandment was a mitzvah, a mitzvah to put on the doorpost of a Jewish home. But the mezuzah itself, they knew, has some kind of power of protection to it. So they would make a stick, and they make a hole in the stick, and place the mezuzah right there, and carry the stick with them. Another example is also from the story of Artavan. Artavan was a, a Parthian emperor who was friendly with Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, Rabbi, who is known as Rabbi. This is in the time of the end of the Second Temple. And let's see the story inside. Artavan, a, a Parthian emperor, sent a priceless, precious pearl to Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda Anas, and said to him, send me a thing of equal value. It seems like he was playing a game with them. I'm going to send you. He was a, 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 a very wealthy, he had a lot of diamonds, and he wanted to see what, what can you send me. So Rabbi, he sent him a mezuzah, Artavan said to him, I sent you a priceless thing and you sent me something worth a phallus? That's a small copper coin. What is it? A piece of parchment. <laughs> what are you sending me? So Rabbi said to Artaban, your possessions and mine are not equal to it. Not only that, but you sent me something that I have to watch over. And I sent you something that watches over you while you are sleeping. As it is written, when you walk, it should lead you, and so on. Okay. What is interesting, the end of this story was with, uh, with Artavan is um, he didn't like the answer. And what happened then, Rabbi Achai Gohan mentions this story, is that his daughter got sick. She had some demon entering her. And he went to all kinds of doctors and he spent lots of money. He was very wealthy. Nothing, nothing, nothing helped. And then he took, he decided that he remembered the mezuzah that Rabbi Yehuda sent. And he took the mezuzah, put it on her, and she got healed. She got cured. Then he realized what the quality of this mezuzah is. So what we see, in any case, from these two anecdotes, as we mentioned, what we see is that the mezuzah has the quality of protection, not only when it's used as part of the mitzvah, you put it the mitzvah, and uh, you put the mitzvah on the mezuzah on the doorpost of a Jewish home, but even without this, just the mezuzah itself, even you send it to, to a non Jew, this art of he for him also it was helpful. So the question is, why? What is it about this mezuzah? What is it about the mezuzah that has this quality of protection? Why would anyone think that a mezuzah provides protection when it's not being used for its mitzvah intended purpose on the doorpost of a home? So what we're going to understand over here, we're going we're gonna to learn that really the the Part of the what you're saying that the mezuzah guards, you know, there are many mitzvahs that the Torah says when you do them, you get rewarded, long life, you get this, you get that. If you follow my ways, you get uh, the rain, you get parnasa, you get whatever you, 
you need to get. There is something special about this mitzvah that it is not just as a reward. Yes, the Torah says, Leman Yirbu Yemecha, that when you follow this mitzvah, you will prolong life. But in addition to that, it is part of the mitzvah itself. It is the feature of the mitzvah, not just the benefit of the mitzvah. The feature of the mitzvah itself is it is something that guards, and we learn it. We we deduct this, we deduce this from the words of the tour that we learned in uh, text number three, as we mentioned. The tour is one of the first halachic authorities, and we're gonna see inside what we learn from him. So the words of the tour is that he says first thing that their days will be prolonged. And then the second thing, it says the mezuzah protects the home. I'm going gonna, gonna to look at it inside, back again in text number three, here. And I made it bold so you can see what we're talking about. The first thing he mentions is all those who are careful with this mitzvah, merit, that their days, along with the days of the, the children's days, will be prolonged. They will live long. Then it says, furthermore, when it says furthermore, if you look into the Hebrew, it's more than furthermore. It says, it's even a greater thing than that, is that the mezuzah protects the home. So the question is, the greater thing than that? What, what's greater, to live long or to have the home protected? Isn't, isn't the greater thing is to be protected, to, to live long. Says the Bach something interesting. The Bach, Rabbi Yol Sirkish, he says, this then is what the tour is trying to say. God gives a person a reward for fulfilling this mitzvah, namely long life for them and the children. That's step one. But then he says, on top of that, the mitzvah itself protects the home from any harm. That's a greater step. Why is this a greater step? It says, this is different from all other mitzvahs. While it goes without saying that God eventually re rewards a person for fulfilling a mitzvah, the reality is that the person doesn't derive any benefit or enjoyment from fulfilling the mitzvah itself. This mitzvah is different in that the pleasure and benefit come from the mitzvah itself, in that it protects their homes. This is in addition to the reward that God will give them for doing this mitzvah, as God would for one uh, who fulfills any mitzvah. So this is the meaning. That's what he says. The long life is a benefit and reward. That is promised when you do this mitzvah. But then he says, what is the mitzvah? The mitzvah of mezuzah is the protection. God wants you to put a mezuzah to be protected. And the Rebbe explains this. This is the words of the Rebbe. In as much as the, mezuzah, the mezuzah's protective qualities associated with the actual mezuzah, an aspect of this idea of protection automatically exists in the mezuzah itself, even before it is used for the mitzvah. The mere fact that it was written for the purpose of, of a mezuzah endows it with protective qualities to the extent that is demonstrated with the story of Rebbe and, and Artaban. So what, what is he saying? 
that that explains why the the mezuzah protects even when it's not used as the mitzvah, even if you have it in your pocket, you have it in your car. Artaban had it with him, and that protected him. Why? Because that is what this mitzvah was about. Hashem gave it to us. One of the things, at least, of what this mitzvah is, is it gave in order to protect. What is interesting is what comes out from here. You know, usually it is said that there is, when, when we teach a person to, to follow God's ways, to do the mitzvahs, the commandments, obviously there are steps, there are stages. You give a child, you, tell, you give him some candy, you tell him to do the mitzvah and he gets rewarded and so on and so forth. When someone gets older, you give him bigger rewards, nicer rewards. You tell him about, and, and when you get even yet greater, you get to a higher level, you tell him about, it's not just the reward, there is the word in the world to come. Ganeiden and all of these good rewards that it says, a promise in the Torah. But what is the ultimate, what is the ultimate way a person should do follow God's commandments is when he does it for the sake of God, not for the sake of a reward, not even for the sake of getting rewarded in heaven. That's also, in a way, not doing it perfectly. However, when it comes to this mitzvah of mezuzah, when you do a mitzvah and you say, I'm going to put the mezuzah because I want to be protected. There is no problem whatsoever. That's not considered doing a mitzvah for the sake of a reward. Why? Because that in itself is the mitzvah. God wants you to put a mezuzah in order to be protected. So let's see. Inside. Okay, so this answer is answer number one. Why would anyone think that a mezuzah provides protection when it's not being used for its mitzvah intended purpose on the doorpost of a home? It says there is a certain protective quality that exists in the mezuzah even outside of its traditional position on the doorpost. Why? And it says, since the, protect, the protection is a feature of this mitzvah as opposed to a reward. It's not just a reward. This is part of this mitzvah. So one can have that feature in mind when doing this mitzvah. And that's the way the Rebbe explains this. In the words of the Rebbe, when it comes to the protection of a mezuzah, in as much as it, it is not a reward, rather a feature of the mitzvah itself, Fulfilling the mitzvah for the sake of that protection would not be considered a diminishment of performance whatsoever. After all, this is one of the mitzvah's feature. This is one of the mitzvah's features, or even more, the mezuzah is designed for protection. What is interesting also is this is also described in the halacha, in the law, how you're supposed to place the mezuzah. This we read earlier. Where do you place the mezuzah? It's supposed, it's supposed to be on the very beginning of the house, as close to the outside as possible. Why? Because the mitzvah is to protect the house. So therefore, you want to make, it, make sure it is as close to the outside as possible. This is from the Gemara, from the Talmud. Rava said, it is a mitzvah to place the mezuzah in the handbreadth adjacent to the public domain, closer to the outside. What is the reason for this? The rabbis said that it is in order that one encountered the mezuzah immediately upon, upon entering the house. Now, Rav Hanina said, from Surah said, it is in order that the mezuzah protect the entire house by placing it as far outside as one can. 
That is why you want the entire house to be protected. That is why you put it right there in the beginning. Other things we find in the way the mezuzah, you know, it is written, as you can see in the picture, you have the shin, dalad, yud. You can see it very clear. But this is written on top of the parchment of the mezuzah. Shin Dalad Yud is one of the names of Hashem. And that is the custom to write it on top of the mezuzah on the outside. This is, brings it from the Bet Yosef, or by Yosef Karo. It says the idea of writing the name Shin Dalad Yud, I don't want to say this God's name, on the outside of the mezuzah scroll is explicitly stated in the Zohar. I stated there, come and see how God's holy name is inscribed on top and on the bottom. For this reason, the name Shindalad Yud is inscribed on the outside. And as the Mishnah's Hasidim says, a person should pray to God for protection with the name Shindalad Yud which is an acronym for the words Shomer Daltot Israel, which means guardian of the doors of Israel. That's, that's what we have on the outside of the Muslim. Shin Dalad Yud Shomer Daltot Israel, the guardian of the doors of Israel. Now, another thing it says also, Maril wrote, that one who wishes to go on a journey outside of the city should place their hands on the mezuzah. Every time a person leaves through the front door, they should place their hand on the mezuzah and say, God is my guardian. God is my shadow. He is by my right hand, God will protect my coming and going now and for eternity. I don't know if everybody says that every time they go, but is that's at least what this is recorded. That's what we say. That's what we do. So the point is, the mezuzah is about protection. Having said all this, which this is one of the features of the mezuzah, of course, what we learn Hasidus, we learn the inner part of the Torah, we always find a deeper dimension, a deeper dimension to every mitzvah. And the same is true also with this mitzvah of mezuzah. The deeper dimension of this mitzvah of mezuzah, the Alter Rebbe says that when we say Bechol Meodecha, we just read in the Shema, Last week in the Torah portion, you should love God, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your might. What does it mean with all your might? It is the, in what, at least in one, uh, one interpretation, it means with all your possessions. When you put the mezuzah in front of the house, what you're, the statement that you're making is that everything here that is in this house, everything is, belongs to God. You're connecting every part of yourself to God. You, you have, God gave you Baruch Hashem, a private life, you have a wife, you have children, you have possessions. But really, you are a messenger of God in this world. So that what the Alter Rebbe is saying, basically, is that the protection of the mezuzah is not some outside side feature of that mezuzah. You have a mezuzah, I want you to, to be protected. It, it's deeper. It, it is the fact that you give yourself completely. You make the statement that Hashem is everything always reminding you that God is everywhere and everything is from God. That itself triggers a parallel 
protection from Hashem, that Hashem shines upon you this greater level of protection. It says, we mentioned this morning in the Tanya class, and it, say, it says, Hashem Silcha, God is your shadow. What does it mean, God is your shadow? So the Rabbi Dov Bear of Mizrich explains that whatever a person does has a direct effect on the higher worlds. So Hashem is just like your shadow. You move your hand, the shadow moves. So you move your hand right here, Hashem moves his hand, so to speak, up above there. So therefore, when you take a mezuzah, you place on your home, and in every door of your home, it is the statement that you're making that you become one with Hashem. Everything here is God's. Everything here is supposed to serve God's purpose. And in turn, that creates that same protection, that same power that Hashem gives. Let's, let's see it inside what the Alter Rebbe says. By putting the mezuzah on the outside of their home, a person demonstrates that they are dedicating and transforming their lives to godliness. And here's what Dal Rebbe says, the words in the verse, with all your might, is a reference to the mitzvah of mezuzah in as much as it achieves a broad uplifting. That is the thrust of all mitzvah to transform darkness into light, etc. After all, all of a person's possession that are in the home are elevated to godliness by placing a mezuzah outside the home. And for this reason, the mitzvah of affixing a mezuzah outside one's home draws down a broad, all-encompassing godly energy. This energy is called a guardian that guards a person and all the possessions from those outside forces that seek, that seek to do harm. In as much as the mitzvah of mezuzah includes all the mitzvahs, it is considered a general guardian over all people. And for that reason, the rabbi said, that what do we need to do? The Rebbe came out, as you well may know very well, there is the campaigns that the Rebbe made throughout the years, starting from the 60s, the campaign of Tefillin, campaign of Tzedakah. And one of the campaigns the Rebbe came out with was the campaign of mezuzah, to make sure that every single home should have a mezuzah. I remember there was, uh, back in the 70s, there was, in Ma'alot, in Israel, there was a terrorist attack with a, with a, with a, in a school, there were 10, 22 children that were killed. And later on, they went to check the mezuzahs in that, in that uh, school, and they found 22 mezuzahs that were not, that were not valid. And, I remember the Rebbe spoke about it and he said, it doesn't mean that the fact that it was no mezuzah that caused the death. But the Rebbe said, it's like the protection was lacking. Like when you go to, to war, you put on a helmet, you put on a protective gear. Does it mean that, that if you don't put on the protective gear, is guaranteed you're going to be shot? No. But the, certainly the protective gear helps to protect. Same thing is the mezuzah helps to protect. So that's why the Rebbe said to make sure it is our job to do, to make sure that every Jewish home has a mezuzah and a kosher mezuzah, not only one mezuzah. Yeah, a lot of people I see, I come, I see the front door that has a mezuzah. Every single door, as you saw in the video in the beginning, if you didn't, you can go back to the YouTube, we're going to show it there. And that every single doorway needs to have a mezuzah. You don't want to play with the protection. The protection, you want to make sure that it's protected properly. So what we need to do is to find a friend, a neighbor, to make sure that they should also place a mezuzah in their homes 
mezuzahs on every door, and the mezuzah needs to be a kosher mezuzah. So number one, first of all, some people think the mezuzah is the nice, uh, beautiful designer case that you find on Amazon or in Judaica store. That's not the mezuzah, that's just the case. The mezuzah is the actual scroll inside that is written. The, the handwritten with the with the with the scribe with the, with the, the scribe that writes every single letter and every single dot on the letter, with having the proper thoughts when he writes. All of this is part of the kashros of making the mezuzah kosher. So that's why you can't just buy by anyone. Get from someone from a rabbi from the store, a trusted store that he, that is knows where where they're getting it from. And uh, I'm going to conclude also, you know. I find many, many times the Rebbe, numerous uh, occasions the Rebbe said to people when there were some problems, uh, health problems, financial problems, other problems, the Rebbe only many times directed them to go check the mezuzah. So we're going to conclude also, and, and a lot of miracles happened. People saw literally miracles, supernatural things that happened when they checked the mezuzah, something was there, they fixed the mezuzah, everything went good. So I'm going to share the video in a minute. And let's just first finish the last text from the Rebbe that talks about this mitzvah of the mezuzah. Says the Rebbe, we must make every effort that every Jewish home have a mezuzah on all doors that require it. And that they should be affixed in accordance with halacha. Because that's also part of the, of the problem. Sometimes the mezuzah is fixed as a mezuzah, but it's in the wrong way, the wrong height, the wrong direction. All, all these things are important. This is an effort that must be made by all people, men and women, for all are obligated in the midst of mezuzah. This is especially true considering the Talmud states, can it be said that men need life, but women do not need life? Of course they need in so doing, it will invoke protection over the home and all its inhabitants. What's more, as the Zoya states, the protection will be in such a manner that God will guard your goings and coming from now and forever. Namely, that God will provide protection when leaving the home, not only when you're not only in the house, but also when you leave the house. Inasmuch as all Jewish people are responsible for one another and all Jews are considered as one body, it's understood that the added effort in keeping the mitzvah mezuzah will add protection for the entire Jewish people, every Jewish man, woman, and child, wherever they may be. And now I want to share with you this video of Rabbi Grossman from Israel. Rabbi Yitzhak David Grossman is Chief Rabbi of Migdal Haemek, Israel. Founder and Dean of the Migdal Or Educational Institutions, which school thousands of underprivileged and at-risk children and teens, he is a recipient of the Israel Prize, the country's highest honor. Abachali Chaya Rivka, Abat Abchora, Kshaita Begil Sheshesrei, היא חוזרת מהבית ספר עם עין נפוחה. חשבנו שזה כלום, עין נפוחה. אבל דבר התפתח והתפתח, והעין נהיה ממש לא סתם נפוך, עם מוגלה, עם דם. התחלנו ללכת לרופאים, בהתחלה לרופאים פה ב- באזור שלנו, אחר כך בבית חולים בחיפה, תל אביב. הדסה ירושלים, וככה בערך שבעה חודשים היינו אצל כל גדולי הרפואים. רופא אחד אומר שזה העין, רופא שני אומר שזה העור, אחר אומר שזה אלרגיה, הרופאים שלא יודעים, אז אני הם מחפשים אלרגיה, לא להתרחץ פה, לא להתרחץ פה, ובתוך כל אותו הזמן כתבתי כמה וכמה פעמים לרבל לבקש ברכה בשביל הבת שלי. הייתי בארצות הברית, ומישהו אמר לי 
שיש לו ידיד, חבר, קוראים לו דוקטור גרינגלס, שהוא רופא מומחה לעיניים, כדאי שאני אתייעץ איתו. Dr. Albert Hornblass, a world-renowned Jewish modern orthodox ophthalmologist and professor, was chairman of the Department of Ophthalmic Plastic Surgery at the Manhattan Eye, Ear and Throat Hospital, and a surgeon and consultant at the New York Eye and Ear Infirmary. He passed away in 2007. <laughs> אף על פי שיש לו את המסמכים, הוא צריך שאיתה בו לבד. צלצלתי לבית וביקשתי שמיד יסדרו לה טיסה, כרטיס, ויזה, ושתבוא מיד לארצות הברית. היא הגיעה לפנות בוקר, הטיסה הייתה בשש בבוקר, היא הגיעה לניו יורק, אומרת לי הבת, אני רוצה לראות את הרבי. היא לא יכולה, היא מיד רוצה לראות את הרבי. אז היה הנוסח שבשעה עשר בדיוק הרבע היה מגיע לסבל סבטים ואנשים היו מחכים בחוץ לראות את הרבע לפעמים נותן לילדים שם הצדקה או לפעמים אומר שלום או לא ונכנס הגענו לסבל סבטים כמה דקות לפני עשר והבת שלי עמדה פה ואני עומד פה והרבע מגיע מה אבא לא עושה בשביל הבת, כרחם אב על בנים. אני עזבתי את השורה שעמדתי, ונעמדתי מול הרבה. זאת אומרת, כשהרבה מגיע לסבל סבטי, הוא חייב לראות אותי. הרבה יצא מהרכב, הרבה הולך ככה, ופתאום אני עומד מולו. אז הרבה הסתכל, הוא הבין שיש לי... זה היה... אמרתי לו, רבה, זאת הבת שלי. שיש לה את הבעיה עם העין, ושאני צריך שיהיה לה רפואה שלמה, שהרבי יברך אותה. הרבי הסתכל עליה, ואומר לי, לבדוק מיד את המזוזה, ויהיה לה מיד רפואה שלמה, ושתזכה לגדל אותה לטוירו, לחופו ולמייסם טריבן. והרבי המשיך. אני מיד יצאתי החוצה, היה טלפון ציבורי, צלצלתי לבית ואמרתי לרבנית שהרבה שהרב אמר שצריכים מיד לבדוק את המזוזות. ויש לנו סופר, שמעתי לקרוא לה סופר ומיד להוריד את המזוזה ולראות. בדקו את המזוזה וזה לא יאומן המילה בין עיניך הייתה מחוקה, המילה עיניך. המילה עיניך הייתה מחוקה. מיד קבעו מזוזה אחרת, מזוזה כשירה. כל זה קורה בארץ, כשאני נמצא ב-770 מתפלל שחרית, אחרי איך שראיתי את הרבל, והבת שלי מחכה לי שם, היה מסעדת... בן שונס, אני כבר לא זוכר איך שזה נקרא, משהו כזה, אתה מחכה לי. אני גומר להתפלל, אני יוצא, אומרת לי הבת, אבא, מה עם העין שלי? אמרתי, מה קרה? אני מרגישה משהו קורה. סוף הסיפור, הדבר נעלם. היא הלכה לנוח, כמה פתאום אין, נעלם. כאילו לא היה. יש לי תור אצל פרופסור גרינגלס, אמרתי לה בוא נלך, הוא מקבל הלם, הוא מסתכל, יש לו את הסקין, שם כל הבעיה שהייתה שם, המוגלה והדם וה... וה... מה שהיה שם, והנה הוא רואה עין נורמלית. סיפרתי לו מה שקרה. שבועיים אחרי שהבת נרפאה והיה הנס הזה, הייתי בפברניה. עברו 18 שנה, 
אני אורח כבוד בניו ג'רסי, נכנס בשבת לבית הכנסת, יהודי שעומד בפינה ומתפלל עם הטלית, רואה אותי, הוא רץ אליי, מתחיל לנשק אותי, מתחיל לבכות, ואני מתבונן, אני לא מכיר את האיש הזה. התברר שזה היה פרופסור גרינגלס. הוא אומר לי, אני ראיתי את הנס של הרבי מלבביץ' עם הבת, ראיתי שיש אלוקות. So, this is the beautiful story of Rabbi Grossman. There's many, many stories like that. But the bottom line is we got to go make sure the mitzvah, the mezuzah, we should do it for ourselves, for our neighbors, for our relatives. Thank you all for joining. You can take any questions if anybody has. We're more than happy.